flus, parents, the works, everything falls apart. Life happens and yeah, anyway. What I wanted to share with you today was, uh, we made this in my class, but it actually comes from a lovely young woman. Her name is uh, Bernadette Lewin, and she put it up on Facebook, and a friend of mine found it and said to me, could we make this one? So I nutted it out, and this is what I've come up with. It's a snow globe card that, it's a twist easel one, so it sits like that. Isn't that gorgeous? This one here is done in the bashful. Um, today we're going to be using crystal blue because I've run out of bashful. Isn't that sad? But anyway, I'll have to live with that. So I'm just going to show you how to do this one today. But it's such a sweet little card. It's a 4x4 four four inch card. So here are the instructions. So you'll be getting those up on my blog. So the pieces that you will need, and I've already set this one up with the tree line border. That is uh, 5 and a quarter by one and a half inches. The piece for this bit here that measures uh, two and a half by one and a half. Our top square is three by three. Our second square is two and a half by two and a half. No, that's a lie. Three and a half by three and a half. God, don't listen to me. Uh, our under square, the white one here, that is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Our base square is 4x4 four four, and our card measures 4x8 and we're going to score it and then score it on an angle. Plus we have a piece, oh I don't know if you can see how well you can see it, of, um, you can either use acetate or I've used, um, um, Bernadette said that she used um, a flip flap but I've chosen to cut up a um, page protector but you didn't hear me say that. And that's what I'm using here, and that's two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So that's where I've got the wrong measurement from. So let us get started. Now, all the measurements in that and all the instructions will be up on my blog, so feel free to go and have a look for that. And we will get started. So first up, I shall score the card. So we're going to score the card at four inches. And then we're going to take it and turn it. So switch it back this way, place the scored edge in the groove and the top edge in the groove and score. And that will give you the perfect size. So we'll fold that over and I have no idea where I put my... Oh, there it is. Now, a lot of the ladies got confused and folded this the wrong way. This folds back inside itself. So it goes like that. So it'll sit like that. Right, so the next piece we'll put on. Now we're just going to add adhesive just to this section here. Where have I put that? Oh, it's right next to me. Duh. Right, so we'll just add, place this onto the top. Now, I'm doing this extremely, well, it's not that early, it's only half past eight in the morning, but Chloe's coming out with Bonnie, and I know that when she gets here, my whole day's gone. That's what I mean by life. Life just gets in the way of my crafting sometimes. Now, the next piece is our, we're going to place our white bit on. So this is a, quite an easy little card, but the actual overall effect is just stunning. So it's just a matter of layering up the pieces. So this colour here is crystal blue. I rather like this one. I've also done it in Glacier too, and that looked really lovely. So we'll just set all that aside for the minute and now we're going to work on the snow globe section here. So we're going to take our three inch square and we're using the two inch um, from the basic circles, we're using the two inch one today, and we're going to center that. Now it needs to be equal on either side, but about a quarter of an inch at the top, and just put that on. And by the miracle of already doing it, oh, there we are. So that's how it'll look when you run it through the big shot. So you'll have your piece ready, because I couldn't be bothered picking up the big shot again. And the next thing we're going to do is the borderline tree. Now I've got this on here. 
Now you will need the little circle for that as well. On here I've put one bit up one way and one up the other one. I've inserted them in and I thought what's the, what's the point in wasting paper? So I've done it like that. So you run it through the big shot Oh, and by miracle here they are here. I've already trimmed them out. So what we're going to do now is take our circle and we're going to start layering up our trees onto here. So I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back and we'll lay that on. Like so. Then we'll get our scissors and any little extra ones. I'll just trim those off and they can be put into the put into it as well. I'll just move that one off. Add our it's such an easy, lovely little card. Now see how there's a, a divot in there? Take one of our little trees, pop it in behind the back, and that'll fill up that hole. Because you really don't want to see any of the, the white pieces. Then we can put this one into here, like so. And then I might take that little tree and just insert him into here. So it makes him look like a bigger tree. There we are. So how simple was that? And then we're just going to take our scissors and just cut around the edge to remove all the excess. So it'll look like that. Now we're going to bring our card back in and before we ad adhere this we're going to lay this down right where we want it to go, put adhesive onto the back of our circle, so lay that on, place our circle back into our hole and lift up so I know now that that's in exactly the right place and then I can finish it off. So we're going to be using some the sparkles and we'll just randomly pop some of these on. These ones here are the larger ones and then I'm also going to use some little bitty sparkles. Try using the scissors instead, and we'll just add those like little bits of um, snow coming down. No, yeah, do I need? Oh, I think I need one in there. You can go slap Abby with this stuff if you wanted to, but anyway, that'll do. I could end up overdoing it, probably already have, and all the life of me. I don't know where I've put my shimmer brush. I'll be back in two minutes. Right, I'm back and here I've got the shimmer brush, the clear one, and we're just going to add some shimmer to the, the trees just to give them that glistening look. It's very hard to see in this light whether I've got enough on, but I think I have. So that's all we need to do there. And then what we're going to do now, oh, I found that little bling. We're going to mount up our thing with some 3D foam dots. I've got everything perfect at the moment. I've made special little drawers. ka -ching. For everything to go into on a shelf that's in front of me without time. Oh, before I do that, we're going to. Okay, where did I put those? Sometimes I can't remember where I put things. There it is. 
we're going to glue dot. Okay, now I have lost it. That's what happens when you have clear bits. Oh dear. Do you know for the life of me I can't find it? I shall. Oh. No, I seriously don't know what I've done with it. Oh, there it is. Kaching. That's what happens with um, clear bits. So I'm just going to take a glue dot, put one in each corner. Oh, come on. Go on there. One. Two. Doesn't matter what size glue dots you use. And then onto here, I'm going to place that over the. over the top. And then using some. foam dots. These are the thicker ones. Oh, it doesn't say what size they are. These are the thicker foam dots. They also come in a thin as well. So you can have thick or thin. So that's the thin one. And there's the thick one. So I hope you can see that. But yeah, so I'm using the thicker one on it. I wanted to give it a bit of height. And we'll just peel off our foam dots. that back over the top of the thing. Right, so we'll set that aside. Now, for our piece here, I'm going to heat emboss it. But I've already done it, but I'll just give you a heads up. So I'm just going to give that a pat. Then I'm using my Versamark ink. Now I'm only doing the bottom half of this. I don't need the whole thing, I just want that bottom piece. Just stand. And lift. And then... <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Oh, I had a bit of paper before. Oh, there it is. Old instructions for something else. There we are. So now what we're going to do is cover it with the silver embossing powder. Now I'll set that aside for a minute. Oh, no, there's a corner missing. There we are. So just move a few things out of the way. that away before I end up with a mess. Now the heat gun will be noisy for a minute. It is a very old one. My husband bought me this a very long time ago. We're just going to heat set it. I love watching this even after all these years. And then we're going to hand cut out around it. Ta-da! I've already done that. I didn't want to have to wait. So then I've just cut out around it. I'm just going to add some adhesive onto the back. Place this so that it's so that it fits underneath the snow globe, like so. See now how you've got the same distance there and there. And then we are going to add some uh, bling. Now uh, this one is our pearls but we don't have pearls in the blue and I haven't got enough white so I have an old packet of these. I don't think you can buy these anymore but I thought that they might look nice with the 
crystal blue. So you want four medium to small ones in the corners. And then when you twist it up, you need to place one large one where you would like it to stop. And that'll be there. So there we go. That's all it takes to make that gorgeous little card. I hope you like this project and I say thank you Bernadette Lewin for putting it up on Facebook and for my friend Desney for finding it. It's just a gorgeous little card. Could you imagine that as a little baby's first Christmas card? How lovely would that be? So till next time, keep on creating and bye for now.